welcome everyone to Ring the Bell. This is DS. And the Sriracha Muchacha, Paloma Star. Let me get my notes out. <laughs> We've got wrestling's musical diva, the fighting siren, Shalandra Royal. Yes. Thanks for having me back. If you don't know Shalandra yet, Shalandra was seen from AEW Dark fighting against the formal AEW Women's Champion, Nyla Rose, and my favorite librarian, Leva Bates. Oh my gosh, that was probably the best slash worst match I ever been in because I literally got my butt handed to me. Team Too Thick got demolished. No, we got annihilated. <laughs> I see what you did there. And also, Shalandra, you know that Ring the Bell loves some divas. What is this whole divalicious nickname? My introduction to the wrestling society was actually at All In and I sang the national anthem. Music is my thing. That's actually what my degree in. I actually specialize in opera. Awesome! Yes. <laughs> A lot of people say they've always been drawn to my voice. So like, you know what? Let me draw my opponents in by singing to them and then, you know, destroying them. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love yeah. it. So <laughs> totally. Music is my passion. Wrestling is my passion. Why not marry them together? But not like Jillian Hall. Not like <laughs> Jillian Hall. Let's go right into this week's SmackDown and Raw because a lot of things happened. We have to, like, I know. so many things. Well, shall we start from this match that I freaking love? Sonya Deville versus Lacey Evans. Round two. It was so good. It was yeah, like, it was really oh, good. it kind of caught me like, oh, okay. I mean, I knew it was going to be like, a, like, oh, decent match, but I didn't know it was going to be like good, good match. Oh, yeah. I was like, I think they both played up to their characters a lot, especially Sonia. I feel like she's the most comfortable in the ring right now, for sure. She's feeling herself. She's feeling her character. She's definitely feeling her moves. And when somebody gains that confidence of being comfortable in the ring, it really shows. And I think that's for a moment right now, for sure. It was a pay-per-view quality almost because it, it was, was. Just, and even last week's match was great too and they did even more than that i was just shook it i had to clinch my invisible <laughs> pearls last week clearly lacy was more of the aggressor and sonya was like not today you know what? i'm not even gonna wait on site and it happened like on site so i'm just like you know what let her have it. I just love this character of Sonya. She's no longer taking the back seat. I'm here. I don't like blondes. It is what it is. I'm coming after you, Lacey. So I was really shooketh, I have to say. This is all about the opportunity because, <laughs> because Sonya, <laughs> like she was great, but on top of being great, she had so many creative spots in this match. Yeah. Like, this match had so many creative things, even including the referee stuff we'll be talking about. If people are given chance, they can do this kind of stuff. They both really show how tough they are and how they can bring it. I have to give it to my girl Lacey though. She endured some brutality. She's had to work herself, you know, up from the ranks because she debuted fairly early. And a lot of people consider her the underdog. They consider her, oh, she's blonde, so she's obviously a favorite and she's getting a push. But she's like, this is why I have a push, honey. You nasties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was really good. She definitely, I mean, Sonia was laying her stuff in and yeah. Lacey was just giving it right back. Like, I thought that was really cool. Like, really two tough women going back and forth. And I kind of, like, felt like their backgrounds come through a little bit. Like, I know we hear a lot about uh, Lacey being a U.S. Uh, veteran and uh, uh, Sonia being um, a MMA fighter, but I feel that kind of almost, like, played into it, even, like, some undertones about it. Everything that they did was, why didn't I think about that? Or, like, that's super creative type of thing. Because you see a lot of things be used a lot, and especially, like, with the ref spot and stuff like that. That's definitely a spot with the ref that you don't see a lot. You see the whole like putting put, put the ref in the middle or distracting the ref or something, seeing stuff like this. I was like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Just in case anyone's worried about the referee, apparently that's a planned spot. Even though they can't, that came in really fluid. It was totally. like, right? it was perfect. I was like, wait, I love when wrestling does that. And it's like, wait. Was that supposed to happen? Like, I love when that happens. I feel like I keep on going back to Sonya, but she just, like, draws my eye to her so much. She's, like, a completely different person. You can just see it in her eyes, and I love it. The fact that she uses her, like, hair up as, like, a Dragon Ball Z. Like, the going yeah. Super Saiyan. I yes. Yes. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> she uses that as that moment to add another kind of element into that match. I think it's really, really interesting. But, uh, Mandy. Mandy came yeah. in. That was kind of heelish in 
my opinion, I don't feel like a face should do that. I don't feel like a face should be like, oh, hey, I'm up here. I'm going to cause a distraction. I get why she did it, especially because Sonia keeps on doing that to her. I just feel that's not very face. I really liked it. Well, Sometimes promos and little speeches and lines coming from Mandy just feels weird sometimes. So at first I was just like, okay. However, it's a girl fight. I'm just like, you know what? You you do what it takes to get her. She insulted everything about you. She tried to keep you from happiness. She tried to keep you from your man. She insulted the blondrage. Like, of course she needs to lose. So I was I was all for it. I, I do kind of agree that it is kind of heelish, but you know, at the end of the day, gloves are off. Like when you get between me and my man, well, whenever I get a man, then <laughs> it's on. The only thing for me is that because I was so invested in this match and it was like, oh my God, this is a pay-per-view match. I want to see where it goes. When Mandy interrupted, I was like, I really nah, need yeah. you to go back. I want yeah. to focus in this match. But can we just say, like, can we have a moment to just appreciate that the lethal roll up was not I used. Know. <laughs> yeah. it was Finally. Right and yeah. yes, the distraction was, you know, we didn't want it, but the distraction was <laughs> there. So just decker one good time. And as soon as I said that, I just saw her coming with the women's right. And I'm like, oh. Thank you. I think that was the first time that Lacey had to legit use her hanky in a match to be like, Ooh, girl. <laughs> like, cause I think most of the time she's like, oh. But I feel like this time, cause I think she got like busted open in her lip or her mouth, and she was like a little glistening. But I feel like this is the first time in the match that she just legit had to be like, oh, I was a run for my money. So <laughs> let's move to a championship match: Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. There's some really interesting spots like tornado DDT, the impressive sunset flip bomb. They were really pulling out moves. Sasha and Bailey was working really well with them. They say Sasha and Alexa don't like each other, but the chemistry is there. I was distracted by the kitty rock walking behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, and I'm like, oh. I did not expect that outcome at all. This is what we're going with. Okay, this is awesome. But it was a good match. I really like the back and forth of it, and Bailey being extra vocal. I feel like I've noticed that a lot more. Even with the Mimi crowd that they have now, she's still. I think she makes her be more of a reason to be vocal as opposed to just like picking on Michael Cole she could actually have other people yes. to interact with. I liked it uh, and I think this is maybe is really going to lead into them finally breaking up or turning on each other and I feel like this is just kind of like catalyst and a like another reason for them to maybe break up but I really didn't see that coming. <sighs> I Bailey gets on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> All that aside, I do think it was a very impressive match. I think it brought a lot out of Alexa, a lot out of Nikki, and it really showed the dynamic. That ending, though, like towards the end, like, I'm just like, oh, what are you doing? What's going on? I mean, <gasps> that seems like the purpose of that spot, right? I mean, yeah. I was really annoyed with Bailey too, but I'm like, I see what you're doing. You're like making fool of yourself doing that whole like bank statement and everything, but I see you, I hate you, and it's yeah. working. <laughs> yeah. Bailey is an annoying, annoying heel. Like, I just rather have her face and just be like, woo, Bailey, side ponytail, but you know, all that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and she's annoying heel, but it makes me hate her even more. The fact that she's like screwing over her best friend. And I feel yeah. like that's like brilliant. I just want to show Bailey the door. Like, go. <laughs> Very Regina George-ish of this whole situation of like, oh my god, what a cute sh spirit. That's so vintage. And like, that's the <laughs> ugliest essence I've ever seen in my life. Like, you know, totally being like super friendly to her face, but like talking so much shit to her behind her back. Right. But I feel just like, you know, like layer after layer after layer after layer to setting up for this big blow off that we all know is going to happen. It's just like, come on. What do we think of Alexa and Nikki losing the title? I just don't know what they're going to do with them next because I don't know what if they're going to be completely out of the title picture now if they're going to go and do have their own feud but I'm just kind of not worried for them but again I feel like Alexa Bliss is kind of getting lost in the mix being a little bit more complacent being outshined by the other women in the ring I am a little upset that WWE it seemed like they were trying to have a own ecosystem for women's tag team with the Iconics coming back and Alexa and 
sneaky, like really solidifying themselves. But again, it is gonna be used as a prop for the main storyline, right? So that's one thing that I'm not happy about. But I also do think Sasha needs a little bit of building up because she hasn't been doing anything. We all know she's great, but storyline wise, she really doesn't have a reason to go for a title if they actually split. So I do like that they're like kind of propping her up, using the title. But propping her up while kind of diminishing the tag titles a little bit too. It's kind of like a woo thing. Yeah. It's like one or oh. the other. I kind of assumed that they were going to win because with the Iconics coming back and at Backlash, they're all going to have that go for the championship. I think it's going to be kind of salt in the wound, I guess, because that's technically how they lost it. Like they had it for like two seconds and then the Iconics took it. So now the Iconics are back. So they're just like, hmm, this is something that we're going to gonna go ahead and use again. <laughs> so you're predicting that the Iconics gonna win? Mm, I don't know. I feel like they're gonna win and like screw it up for like Sasha and Bailey or something's gonna so happen. Too. And that's gonna cause a dissension. Because if not, and if Sasha and Bailey keep it, that's really gonna be difficult. Well, I don't know. That could create more dissension as well and have them lose it later. I do agree with you though. I do think that they're gonna lose the titles to I hope the Iconics and I feel like it's uh, Bailey's gonna blame Sasha and be like, this is your fault. We lost the titles because of you. And then that's gonna maybe yeah. start really going off of it. <laughs> Or what if the Iconics are the ones that actually separate? What I can say is that I don't want to put that energy out in the world right now because <laughs> I, I need them to be together. We're going to pray that it doesn't happen, <laughs> but in the event, at least you were prepared. Okay, okay. <laughs> Shall we move to Raw? Raw starts with huge women's promo. So Asuka came out for that match for Charlotte Flair. And then Bailey and Sasha Banks came out. Charlotte came out. And Iconics came out. I was like so excited. At first I'm like, okay, we can just see them wrestle. I just want to see it. But I was I was all for it. Charlotte was looking so good. I couldn't, I couldn't front. Like she is literally embodying like the queen and her presence. And I don't know, maybe because I spend so much time like being against her but this week it just hit me i don't know where i've been i don't know what i've been doing your eyes are open my eyes are open maybe my like my lashes are finally like let me see or something i don't know shalandra i think we have switched place because <gasps> as of this raw i have completely turned on charlotte flair ah! i I am done. <laughs> I am done. <laughs> Mind you, we filmed the Takeover in Your House review yesterday, and I was all for Charlotte. I love that finish, I love that match, but in this Raw, I was just like, I am so freaking done with you. I'm so sick. And she wrestled twice. <laughs> so I am tired of seeing her. She said something like she doesn't need a title to validate herself or something like that. Well, that's because you're on TV every single time. Like. I just, I don't understand. She's like McDonald's. You know, like, if you drive so many miles, like every two miles is a McDonald's. Not McDonald's. So I'm like, can you, can you stop? Oh. It's not good for me anymore. I can't take it. I can't. I thought the segment was a little bit too long. I could see why, but I feel like it was a little bit too long. I also feel like the Iconics kind of reverted back to their, like, initial original characters because I kind of like the momentum that the Iconics have been going to be more badass, more a little bit more serious, a little bit more mm -hmm. hard hitting. But I feel like in this segment, they were like a little bit too much uh, like their old selves. But I don't think they completely have abandoned that type of character. But I just felt like you saw it a little bit more here. And then whenever I saw what was going on and what the, what the setup was for it, I was like, there's only one face in this match. Legit one face. You know, I think they're giving that goofy role more to Billy and then they're keeping Peyton pretty strong because even in this match, I love the whole interaction with Sasha and Peyton because that back and forth really showed that Peyton could keep up with Sasha Banks, the boss, yeah. and the Widow's Peak. I like oh, that was cool. Oh, I thought that yes. was cool too. That's a move that I feel like it's awesome and you don't see a lot. That and the Gory Bomb too. I know Kaylee Ray does it, but I feel like, oh, they in this match, I thought it was pretty pointless. And it was pretty painful to see Billie Kay, who is a number one contender. She's going to challenge for a championship this Sunday. This Sunday. And she lost. It was pointless for Asuka and Charlotte. They're not a tag team. They could care less. Clearly, Charlotte could care less. I think they're just really trying to put Asuka over right now because they kind of like snatched her thunder. Paloma, you still haven't said anything about Charlotte. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> 
so she's so good, but I feel like it's almost to a fault. Like we get it, she's good, but we don't have to see her every single time. I mean, this is a little bit more NXT than anything. I just really wish she would have done a little bit more with the NXT title, like okay. wrestle somebody different each week for the NXT title. And I also could feel like that wasn't even. I get it, it's NXT, and I feel like that wasn't even acknowledged. Like if I was doing the promo, I'd be like, bitch, you just lost last night. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, she does look great. I don't know, different hair, different makeup. I don't know if she carries herself. <laughs> Like, oh, all right. It's all that Mexican food she's eating. I know, I know all about that. The Believe Mexican me, food, the Mexican I know loving. about that. <laughs> that Mexican loving. I was fine with Charlotte going to NXT because there was a role. She was supposed to lift up and elevate the division. I was fine with her going to WrestleMania because she can really work and be a bondage between Ronda and Becky. But this Raw, the fact that she was running the entire show, having two match, having a main event, being in Asuka's business in between Nia Jax, who was nowhere to be seen other than just a little interference and she just lost last night there's no logical reason for charlotte to be here and run the entire show she did not mention her title loss at all didn't make any sense to me i literally feel like someone is putting it down my throat and i don't like it when it touches my never mind <laughs> They're putting all their eggs in a basket, and I feel like that basket is Charlotte. Like, build somebody else up, you know? Please. Like, have, like, have somebody as good to face Charlotte. I don't know. It's all, Where's Naomi? All on Charlotte. Right? Where's Naomi? I, and no, I was legit pissed about this. Where is Bianca? Why even move Where's her to Raw? Bianca? Why even to say, I go here now? Where is she? I was legit pissed off about that. There's like way more women in the bag. Like, uh, use them or build them up, have a side storyline with them, something. And I also thought it was really random or like where's Naya you know the one that's actually gonna wrestle this exactly time. that's my main problem like okay like I understand that Charlotte is getting all the opportunity but I'm fine as long as it serves a purpose she's like cock blocking Nia Jax this is her time to shine she just Facts. came back maybe she's being punished for um, the injury I don't know that's like a speculation that's going around I don't know but I don't care I want a good story either way so I need Nia Jax who is a contender to be out there show herself as a credible contender but all she did was some cosplay last week like Lay Cool would do or AJ Lee would she's like she's not putting herself as a credible contender the monster she is right yeah for yeah, sure guess, and also yeah. if I was Charlotte and if I was in that match I'd be like why do I have to wrestle I'm I, you know like I don't have to tag with you you go do this so let's go to the main event it's honestly just extension of this match and it went another 30 minutes okay it was a good match it, it was, was. It was. Yeah, it really was it really was I think it would have been a better match if we didn't have that whole ma first match honestly just because I feel like we like kind of like oh we already saw them because you know the whole like main event it's like oh can't wait for the main event like oh they're, they're, they're like basically this is what we're here for but yeah. I feel like it would have been way better or much better received if that didn't happen but the match itself if we were in a vacuum was a great match I mean as always I mean that's what you come to expect from Asuka and from Charlotte I love that spot where Asuka reversed a spear yeah that yeah. was cool at first I'm like is that a Butch or no, but I loved it. I'm like, oh, I gotta do that. <laughs> there were multiple really good spots. Even the moonsault outside, I think that was pretty cool. What? Because I felt like Asuka was standing there forever in a decade waiting. Yeah. Obviously, the camera nice, nice angles, nice. you know, helped us like not think about that. But as a worker, I'm like, is she just looking at her butt? She probably <laughs> notices the work. Be like, hey, you know, yeah. like for me, I like timing. I yes. want to see is like Asuka like looking up last minute and then catching it or whatever. But I'm more impressed when she does it from the top turnbuckle than she did it You're from right. there. Another reason I freaking hated Charlotte in this match, let me rephrase that. I really like Charlotte as a performer. I think she's great. She does great promo, great matches, very reliable. It's all creative's fault for putting her everywhere. Even how this match was put together, Charlotte was dominating most of the match in this 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That just added add it to my wrath <laughs> i will say this charlotte is amazing at selling the almost two the two and three counts like when it's almost like she kicks out last minute and charlotte's like what one two like the kind of like the conversation <laughs> she kind of has with herself and the ref her and triple h should sell that with the best <laughs> that i've ever seen i know some two random people but she does that so well like the frustration that she's like what do you mean you kicked out of that what do you mean she kicked out of that? like are you sure that was in three so I really appreciate that, like the little things. I think she does well, and she like kind of like 
I notice it because with anybody else, if it was any other match, you really don't notice that. Notice that, but because Charlotte is good at those little things, especially stuff like that, you do notice that. But you're 100 percent right. It's not Charlotte's fault. It's not like that. Charlotte's like, I want to be in every show and every match and every segment. <laughs> what stand out to me in this match was Iconics coming in, attacking Sasha Bailey. Oh yeah, I popped for that moment. That was like a mint that I needed in that match. Can I be super petty for a little bit? I kind of hate that they changed. Like, I know you just wrestled. Why can't you just stay in your gear? <laughs> like I said, I know. Super Petty has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I just I'm... hate that they changed. I'm... Even though they all looked amazing, especially Sasha. She's serving those looks. Yeah. I'm just like, so you changed? I don't know. That's just me being weird and petty. Like, you just, I don't know, come with your top of your gear and pants or something. Like, oh, shit, yeah, there's a match play. What I felt about even this interference is that because Iconics took the fall, they had to one up them again by having them attack Sasha and Bailey. So a lot of it seems like, oh, they lost here, so let me give them this. Charlotte lost yesterday, so let's give her a little win. Plus one like back and forth. Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth booking, which didn't really progress anything. Right. I can see that. So so Naya interfere at the end of the match. I'm tired of seeing her already. There's only so many stares that she can give, you know, like she, there's some people that just have like a certain presence and they can serve you different energies. Hers is just the same. Like, okay, she's big. She's tough. She might destroy somebody or not. She's trying to be petty, but I'm, I'm just tired of looking at it. I just want to see you wrestle. I want to see you wrestle well and just like, let's figure out what they're going to do with you. I was kind of mad how they keep on just like one move takes her out. Like, so I feel like, you know, like, what was it? The hip attack? I think that it was. And boom, she was out. Like, I get it. It's, it's, it is a bigger, more devastating move. But it was that. And like her being grabbed by the hair makes her go down to one knee. They're almost booking her seemingly like, oh, you just hit her with one thing and she's done. Almost not really as believable. And then that with the whole, I'm still going to go back to her not being as intense and as, as hard hitting as I know she can be. It's kind of a mixture of her like being the whole, I don't know, just kind of like just going with it. Like she needs a little extra something too yeah. but i don't have much anticipation about their match asuka versus nia Jax on paper should be phenomenal like it's two powerhouse getting together but they completely failed booking for some reason i'm still mad that they made nia Jax come out cosplay as asuka like is that really the best booking you've got for nia Jax, oh so annoying i just don't have any faith that nia is going to beat asuka from this booking she yeah, shouldn't. Yeah. I'm just going to set my bar low so I can be thoroughly surprised if that yeah. makes sense. I don't, I don't hate them. I don't hate Naya. I love Naya. I just, I'm not ready for the match. I don't no. really want to see yeah. it. And I am a big fan of Naya too. I think when utilized well, she is phenomenal. I think her storyline with Alexa Bliss was really interesting, but eh, just this storyline was a flaw. Like, I don't think anybody thinks that Naya is going to win. I don't think anybody at all thinks Naya has any reason to win. Watch, watch her win now. Yeah. But that'll be great. You know? <laughs> she does have a lot to prove. So many people are saying she's unsafe. She doesn't know how to wrestle. She needs to go back to NXT. And while there may be some validity to some of those comments, she still is a worker. She still is there. And she's like, this is my opportunity. And I know from personal experience, you know, sometimes working with someone that has way more experience than you can make you look 10 times better. There's times I pulled off stuff and I'm like, oh, I look good. And I'm like, no, it's, it's probably the person that I'm working with. And I got a little in me, too. But so maybe they're like us putting her with Asuka will bring out the beast that we really want in Naya. Now that I think about it that way, I'm actually really interested now. I just had to think, you know. <laughs> Talk it out. <laughs> Talk it out, you know. <laughs> you just gotta promo yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is this week's Raw and SmackDown review. It was pretty heated. <laughs> Thanks to the queen. <laughs> oh. Chalandra, thank you so much for joining in for this week's review. Thanks for having me. Where can we see all your devilicious glory? Well, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And that is fighting siren underscore R. Again, fighting siren underscore R. And you can see all my wrestling musical glory. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at Paloma Star. I don't post on TikTok. I just look at everybody's stuff on TikTok. Have you been doing that wipe thing? Oh. No. <laughs> That's what, my mirror is too small to do that. But everybody else is. <laughs> and you can find me at DSU and ring the bell DS on Twitter and get this 
Opportunity T-shirt. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunities, opportunities. You know what? I mean, enough. Because we need other people to get that opportunity. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.